Take your Bible this morning and <clears throat> turn to Mark chapter 1. <clears throat> Mark chapter number 1. We have been dealing for the last uh, two months talking about the compassion of Jesus Christ on this series of messages of the friendship of Jesus. And this morning we're going to look at how the Lord is compassionate toward us in our times of banishment or bad health. Look at Mark chapter 1. Look at verse 40. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him and kneeling down to him and saying unto him, If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he was cleansed. Wow, what a story. There's a lot of good stuff here. So let's pray and we'll jump into it. Now, Father, we thank you so much for every blessing that you've given to us. And Lord, we're so thankful for your compassion toward us when we're sick, when we're not feeling well, when we have serious illnesses. God, we're so thankful that you watch over us, you care for us, and even give us health. So Lord, we pray that as we look at what this leprous man went through in his life and what he encountered with you in this story, may we learn some wonderful things that will just bless our hearts and draw us closer to you. May you be glorified in the message, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Well, as we unzip these three verses, we are reminded of the compassion that Jesus has for you when you face times of banishment or bad health in your life. We read of a man who was afflicted with the scourge of leprosy that approached Jesus Christ for help. His situation was desperate for sure. Most people that had leprosy, they lived a slow agonizing death. It was awful. Those who contracted leprosy believed that they were cursed by God Himself because it was so horrendous, horrific, hideous, heinous, horrifying, harrowing, heartbreaking, and harmful. It was a bad thing to have leprosy, okay? If a person had tubercular leprosy. He suffered pain in his joints. His or her skin would become thick and develop nodules, lumps, and swellings on the face, the nose, the lips, the cheeks, or the forehead. As these lumps got larger on the face, the person, they lost their human appearance. They, the person begins to take on the face, get this, they begin to take on the face of a lion or a man with ears like a horse or a goat. As the lumps enlarge, they begin to ooze with a smelly pus. The eyebrows, they fall out, and the voice of the leper becomes hoarse from the nodules that are growing on his vocal cords. This plight could last as long as nine years. In the end, the person decays mentally, and they go into a coma, and they die. Those with anesthetic leprosy, they lose the sensation of the nerves in their body. 
they cannot, <clears throat> they cannot feel things, which means that they could cut themselves or burn themselves and not even know it at all. The muscles begin to waste away. The tendons begin to contract and the hand begins to shrivel up like a, like a claw. The fingers and the toes become disfigured. In the end, the hand or the foot may actually drop off the body. This may go on for 20 to 30 years until death provides relief for the leper. Those who had a mix of these two types of leprosy would also contract a disease that would include psoriasis that would cover the body with white scales. This condition gave rise to the phrase, a leper white as snow. Having such a disease affected a person physically, emotionally, mentally, and also spiritually. Every realm of his life was affected. Lepers were the outcasts. They were the loners of society. They constantly lived with broken hearts. They were misfits or castaways that were unwanted, rejected, friendless, alienated, shunned, and ostracized. When people saw the lepers, they would run away from them and they would scream, Lepers! Lepers! Lepers, run! Lepers! How would you feel if people screamed and ran away from you when they saw you? It would be awful, beloved. If lepers entered an area that contained people, they were to warn the people, Unclean! Unclean! How would you like to have to deal with treatment like this, that every time you went to the mall, you had to shout out to the people, Unclean! So that they would stay away from you. How humiliating it must be for a person to go through this kind of rejection. You know, this is the background of the man that came to Jesus this day. This is a taste of what his life was like. It took a lot of courage for him to come to Jesus Christ because of the stigma of society. It was humiliating to listen to the scorn and the heckles of people. It was also dangerous. If some people, they would do this. They would throw stones at lepers to drive them away. But this man of faith, he came to the Lord anyway. The leper came, the Bible says, beseeching Jesus. That word beseeching is from the word parakaleo, which means to beg, to call to one's side. He was calling Jesus to himself. This man felt that he could approach Jesus even though he was an outcast and considered despicable. He felt he could approach the Lord. See, Jesus had a welcoming presence. He pleaded with Jesus for help. He knew that the Lord was the only one who could meet his need, and he was right. By the way, do you realize that too? This room is filled with a whole bunch of needs right now. It's full of needs, but I'm going to tell you something right now. The Lord can meet the needs that you have in your life. Some of you here this morning, you're hurting. People have hurt you, but God can meet that need. Some of you are scared to death about some things. God can meet that need. <laughs> he sure can. You may be here this morning, you're sick, and God can meet that need too. He can bring healing. He can bring strength. 
Uh, you may have financial difficulties, but God can meet that need too. God can meet, the Lord can meet your need in your life. I like what Paul said. Philippians 4.19. But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. How many of you have seen that ver verse fulfilled in your life? Would you raise your hand and say, Amen. We have a Lord that meets our needs. With reverence and respect, this leprous man, picture it in your mind now, this leprous man kneeled at the feet of Jesus, showing him respect and honor. That was a good place for the leper man to be. Many sinners have spent time at his feet and have had their lives changed. The example of these folks provide for us what we ought to be doing at the feet of Jesus now in our quiet time with God. For example, a guy named Jairus prayed at his feet for his daughter to be healed. Mary learned at Jesus' feet as she heard his teachings. A sinful woman found forgiveness for her sin at his feet. Peter con confessed his sinfulness at his feet. A man found rest at Jesus' feet when uh, the Lord had cast demons out of him. Mary found comfort at his feet after the death of Lazarus. At his feet, Mary anointed the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair as an act of worship and honor for him. Kings worshipped at the feet of Jesus when he was just a toddler. A leprous Samaritan expressed his gratitude to Jesus while at his feet. The demons of hell proclaimed the deity and authority of Jesus at his feet, saying, here's what the demon said, Thou art the Son of God. Let me ask, do you realize the demons of hell proclaim that Jesus is the Son of God? Man, there are a lot of people in this world today that don't even acknowledge that but the demons of hell know better. Well, all these sinners remind us that spending time at the feet of Jesus is a good place for you and me to be, folks. Man, learn to spend time with the Lord in this weird world with all that's going on. I'll tell you what, spending time with the Lord will bring sanity back into your life and a sense of calm and peace. You know what? It's a good place to pray, to learn, to confess your sins, to find forgiveness, rest, comfort, to worship, praise, and thank the Lord for all that He has done, all these things you can do at His feet. Most important of all, it is the place to find His saving grace and salvation. At the feet of Jesus, the leprous Samaritan knelt. He, ex he expressed his faith in Jesus by telling the Lord that he was willing, the Lord could make him clean. You know, the word canst here means that he believed Jesus had the ability and power to cleanse his life. And that leprous man was right. Let me say right here that without the Lord Jesus Christ, you are just like this leper. You are unclean because of your sinful condition. All men, women, boys, and girls are sinners that need Christ's salvation. Romans 3.10 says this, There is none righteous. No, not one. That's pretty emphatic. 
Romans 3, 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you will turn from your sin and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to save your soul from hell, He will do that for you. His blood will cleanse you of all your sin and unrighteousness. You, your church, your preacher, or a priest cannot do this for you. Only Jesus can cleanse you of your sin. 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you do not know the Lord as your Savior, you can put your faith in Him today and He will change your life. Let me say that the Lord may allow seasons in our lives, seasons where we become desperate. He may allow this to break your will and be submissive to God's will for your life. He uses our helplessness and feelings of hopelessness to humble us and move us to depend on God to meet our needs and to do the impossible so that He gets the glory in our life. Luke one thirty seven says, For with God nothing shall be impossible. That statement was made after an angel of the Lord told the Virgin Mary that she would give birth to a boy after the Holy Spirit would come upon or overtake her. He continued and told her that her cousin Elizabeth, who was an old woman, would conceive and give birth to a baby too. See, beloved, God is in the business of doing the impossible. Never underestimate what He can do. He accompli His accomplishments of doing those things that are impossible, incredible, indescribable, insolvable, impassable, and immovable demonstrate that His power is invincible and that He gets all the glory for what He has done. Watching and listening to this man's faith who was disfigured and deformed by his leprosy and most likely smelled awful from the rotting flesh on his body and oozing pus from his sores. Jesus told this leper, I will be thou clean. What words of comfort those must have been to this leprous man. The Lord stretched out his hand in compassion, and he did what you are not supposed to do with a leper. He touched the leper. He could have said the words, Be thou cleansed. But instead, he touches this man. Now the word touched here is a very powerful word in the Greek New Testament. It's the word haptomai, which means to fasten 
one's self to or to cling to. That's what Jesus is doing with the leprous man. He's clinging to this man. Christ demonstrated his compassion and his love toward this man who most likely had not been touched or held by another person for a very long time. Now, that's Jesus for you. He loves the unlovely. He comforts the castaway. He receives the rejected. He draws near to the neglected. And he gives hope and he gives help to the heartbroken sinner. And I thank God for that. He is the sinner's friend. You know, a recent magazine article on the Big Brother movement, it tells of a boy who was sent to the house of refuge and therefore attended the school at this institution. One day in one of his classes, he was asked, this boy was asked to spell the word friend. The letters came slowly for him. F R I E N D. And then the teacher asked him, What does the word mean? And that little fellow studied for a moment for a way to express his thought, and then he said this. He said, oh, a friend is a feller that knows all about ye and likes ye the same. That was his definition of a friend. It was the highest thing in friendship his brief life had taught him. And that is the wonderful tie that binds us to our friend in heaven, the Lord Jesus Christ. He knows us all. He knows all our mistakes. He knows our falls. He knows our disloyalty. He knows our far wanderings. And He still cares for us. He knows all about us. And the Bible says he still loves us. Paul put it this way in Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We were yet sinners. When Jesus said to the leprous man, Be thou clean. The leper was healed immediately. What hope that is to all of us if we face a situation where our health is bad or when we are rejected by other people. If you do not know the Lord as your Savior, then seek His forgiveness and His cleansing. It's ready to go. It's available if that's what you want. Put your faith in Him to save your soul. He will be your friend for eternity. And if you are willing, He will use you for His glory. He will use you. Evangelist Dana Williams shares the story about an event that happened to him one night at a church in Alabama where he preached. After church, when when most of the people had departed, he gathered his things to leave the church. And he met an old man who was closing up the church. This man was 81 years old. And Dana asked the man if he was a member of the church for very long and if he, if he was from around the area. And the old man said, yes, yes, I, I live just a few miles down the road that way. And that statement This statement grabbed his attention, and the man said this. He says, I was saved when I was 69 years old. 
Uh, we all know that that is rare as a person gets older. So that statement caught Dana's attention when he said that. So the old man shared his testimony with Dana. He had retired and his desire was to trade and collect antiques. That's what he wanted to do. He would hunt for them. He would buy them. And he would trade for them. And he told Dana, I came around the road one day and I saw two old wagon wheels. I had been looking for wagon wheels like these for a long time. One was on one side of a driveway and the other was on the other side. And I just had to have them wagon wheels. So the old man continued. And he said to his wife in the car with him, I'm going to go up there and see if I can bargain with that man and get those wagon wheels. So the old man pulled up the drive and there was a man in the yard. He got out of the car and introduced himself to the owner of the wagon wheels. And the old man said, Sir, the reason I pulled up here is because I saw those two wagon wheels and was wondering what kind of price would you put on them so I could buy them from you? And the wheel owner said, Well, I really never thought about selling the wheels or even wanted to do that. And then he said to the old man, Let me ask you something. Do you go to church anywhere? And the old man said, No, I, I'm not much of a church goer. And the wheel man said, I, I'll tell you what, if you'll come to my church this Sunday morning and just sit through the service, then after church, you can come over to my house, we'll dig up the wagon wheels, and you can have them free. And the old man was shocked. And he asked the wheel man if he was serious, and he said, Yep, I'm serious. You can come to my house and you can have them wagon wheels. You can have them. So the old man continued the story. And he said, I got into my car. I never said yes. I never said no. I pulled out of the driveway. My wife asked me, well, did he want to sell the wheels? And I said to, said to her, no. He wanted to give them to me. And she said, give them to you? Why? Why would he do that? And he said to her, if I come to church this Sunday morning, I can have them wagon wheels for free. And the wife said, you've been a reprobate all of your life. It won't hurt you to go to church at least one time. So the old man said, said to Dana, since she encouraged me, I turned the car around. I pulled up in the drive, got out and said to the wheel owner, Sir, are you serious? And he replied, yes, I am serious. You can have that wagon wheels if you'll come to church this Sunday. So the old man continued and said to Dana, I came to this church on Sunday morning, me and my wife. I sat here on the back row right here. I intended to get in, to get out, and get my free wagon wheels. But right in the middle of that sermon, that preacher started preaching the gospel. and He talked about my sin and my need for Jesus Christ. I couldn't wait for him to get done. I ran to the altar and got down on my knees and got saved by the grace of God. And when I, when I got up and looked up, I looked at my wife. She was getting saved too. You know, beloved God used some old wagon wheels to bring two sinners into the kingdom of God. Now, you, you think the Lord got the glory out of that? Yeah, I would think so. But wait a minute, wait a minute. The story does not end there. The old man did not finish his story when he was telling it to Dana. He told Dana, 
After a year I was saved, a missionary came through who helped to distribute the Gospel of John booklets. And the missionary asked if there was anyone in the church who would be willing to put the booklets of John together. And I volunteered and said, yeah, I will. I will do that. So for 11 years, this man had been working on this project of putting Gospel of John's together. And excitedly, he told Dana, he said, to date, this church has sent out one million booklets of the Gospel of John. Beloved, when this man gets to heaven, he's going to meet a bunch of wagon wheel saints of God who were saved by reading the Gospel of John and trusted in Jesus Christ. And as far as we know, the man never went back to get the wagon wheels. He found something better. Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ is your Savior? If not, why not trust in Him today? If you are a Christian, never underestimate, never underestimate what can, God can do in you and what He can do through you when you are willing and surrendered and yielded to Him.